A year and a half ago, I was at the Dublin Writers Conference, it was my second time there, and I had just come out of a particularly brilliant presentation by somebody. I don't remember who it was, but I'm sure they were an expert in whatever field it was and whatever they were talking about. But anyway, I remember coming out and mingling with some people, and, and I said, oh my gosh, I wish we could do something like this back where I live in Shepherdstown. There's so many writers and wannabe writers that could benefit from this. It's just a shame we don't have it. So standing next to me is this Scottish woman named Wendy H. Jones. Some of you probably have met her already. If you haven't, you're going to meet her a thousand times tomorrow. And she said, well, why don't you just put one on? And I said, well, I don't know. And then on my left was Joanne Barrio. Where are you? I just saw you there. And Joanne said, I'll help. <laughs> and so, you know, in no time, we ended up with a with a uh, fantastic uh, steering committee. I've already talked about them. And we, we put together this wonderful thing. Um, and honestly, um, the Writers' Conference at Shepherd University, that's the name of it. And for those of you that are involved with anything digital, you know that keywords are important. The keywords on this thing are Shepherd University. <laughs> they have been just extraordinary. I mean, they're full partners in this thing. They've provided the, the facilities and backup support and catering, and, and it's just been amazing. And of course, to have the prestige of Shepherd University associated with this was, you know, something we could never have gotten otherwise. So we are very indebted to Shepherd University. And with that in mind, I would like to introduce to you the person who helped navigate the path to make this possible, the provost of Shepherd University. If any of you know me, I'm dangerous in front of a microphone, so good evening. I can't tell you how exciting it is to see this full house here at Irma Orbert Hall. Um, for how many of you, this is your first time in Shepherdstown or here at Shepherd University? Raise your hand. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, first of all, I want to say welcome uh, on behalf of our president, Mary J.C. Hendricks, her mantra of innovation, opportunity, and excellence really informs everything that we do. And we are so proud to be a partner with the Manuscript to Marketplace Conference. And you know what? I think I know how that typo came in there. I'm a big fan of alliterations. So I'm thinking Manuscript, Marketplace, May. We had to, we had to keep the M's going in there. But, uh, for those of you that are new to Shepherdstown, Shepherd University, West Virginia, Shepherd is West Virginia's public liberal arts university, and we have uh, a wide away array of degree programs from those in the arts and sciences to professional programs in nursing, business, education, music and art, social work, and recreational studies. And we're really fortunate that we have this perfect setting this beautiful night and weekend, in spite of the Olympic <clears throat> hurricane, um, to have our liberal arts university uh, uh, located here. And Shepherdstown, you may not know, is actually the oldest town in West Virginia. One where we like to say we have the oldest town, but the newest ideas and innovative ideas like today's conference. Uh, it is, in fact, one that I think is overflowing with uh, cultural and recreational offerings. In fact, my clone right now is at a farm to table fundraiser for scholarship dollars, welcoming people, and I'll be going back there later. But you know, because of our proximity to Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, our students, our faculty, we have the opportunity to engage with businesses, with government agencies, embassies, and cultural centers. We've been increasing our international student populations, and of course, artists. <coughs> such as yourselves. But we are really thrilled that our Department of English and Modern Languages has partnering with uh, this cadre of internationally known authors, our corporate partners like Ingram Sparks, to bring you this uh, conference, Manuscript to Marketplace. Well, and I've already told you that I'm all about a theme and alliteration. And so, more about that. Okay, I'm gonna uh, digress. Here is a fun alliteration quote about writers. I don't know who said it, but if you wait for inspiration to write, you're not a writer, you're a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I think that this conference is very, very relevant. You know, today's fast-moving global innovation culture, we still find that words matter more than ever. Stories matter. Your story, that of others. And we clearly see the transformation, the evolution that has taken place in the marketplace, in the world of publishing. But you know, these words are still an integral part of the fabric of our humanity, that which binds us together. Now, on the, on the practical side, while we have a focus on the traditional liberal arts skills and those outcomes like written and oral communication, knowledge of the world, ability to work collaboratively, think critically, we're also working to move our students from alliteration alert courses to careers as we train the next generation of leaders and model citizens who just like you are wondering, okay, what's my next step? I wrote this great book, now what? How do I get it out there? How do I get my story out there? So this conference is really a perfect example of how we can prepare students with pre-professional experiences by mingling with professionals like yourselves, expand the horizons of our faculty, and be of service to our communities and the great society of writers. Because you know, what you do is so very important, and it's something that the world needs. I'm all about quotes, too. The writer Chekhov said, don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of light on broken glass. You know, the world is full of possibilities, and in the words of another author, a book, your book, that you're writing, that you're hoping to publish, is a dream that you're holding in your hand. Pretty powerful stuff. So I want to say, here's to wishing you a successful conference, one full of exciting and inspiring ideas to tell and to share your story. So welcome to Shepherd, and I hope that you have a terrific conference. It's so exciting to see all of you here. Thank you. A couple of quick housekeeping things. Since we're talking about Shepherd University. I was gonna. I thought maybe I could point, but I can't. The most important thing to know is that tomorrow there's a football game. <laughs> and part of what is exciting about that is that you know, it just makes you feel like you're on a college campus, right? There's going to be a marching band, you're going to hear clapping, you're going to hear whistles and flags down, and it's going to be fantastic cheering. However, it's also going to be a parking uh, issue. So, you have all parked in the parking lot next to this building tonight. You must remove your cars tonight. And not that you were thinking of keeping them there, but I've been told to say this exactly. Do not leave your cars here overnight. This will not be available tomorrow. So, the lot that I've, we've designated for you guys is lot A. You can see that in the lower right-hand corner. For those of you that live in Shepherd Sound, it's the one that's kitty corner from the blue moon. Okay, It's behind the Science Center and the library there, lot A. We use it all summer long when the kids aren't here, right? That's the lot to use tomorrow, and then you can just, you'll have to walk up to the building to the now. Okay, so don't forget, yes. The easiest way to think about that is it's accessible through Princess Street. Princess Street, right. Yes? Will there be any uh, tailgate parties going on in that parking lot? There will, not in, not in a lot, but in, in these lots here. Okay. And that's why it's reserved for, for that. So we, there wasn't a football game scheduled when we scheduled this, but we, you never know about the first one. So. No. <laughs> no wonder she's the director of. Oh, never mind. Um, how many of you have written a book? All right. I want to buy your book. I want to buy your book. Can I buy your book at Barnes and Noble? Raise your hand. Fewer of you. And can I buy your book on Amazon? If you said no to these or didn't raise your hand, you're in the right seat because our speaker tonight started out at Amazon. Well, she started out well before Amazon. But, oh. 
I told her I'm never going to remember who advanced this. And she said, just nod me and I'll tell you. Um, Robin has had a long career in, in publishing and many other interesting things, but she, she created, or she worked at Create Space at Amazon. If you all, if any of you know that, right? That was one of the forerunners of self publishing. Then she went to Ingram Publishing and is the director of Ingram Spark, which is the uh, book distribution uh, facility or, or uh, department uh, for independent self published self publishing. Ingram is the largest book distributor in the world. This is a giant in the industry. And there's so much to learn from Robin. She's going to be here all day tomorrow. Conferences can do lots of things. They can, you can meet new people, you can give advice to people, and you can also learn from people. The speakers we have this week are world class, so please take advantage of them. We want to be taken advantage of, I promise. <laughs> so I would like to bring Robin Cutler, the director of Ingram Spark, the self publishing division of Ingram, the largest book distributor in the world. Everybody got a message back? Where else will they tell you not to silence your phone? Okay, so 
uh, everybody still, they're still sleeping. Anybody need help? Mine doesn't work because it's Scottish. <laughs> so she needs help uh, back there. Somebody can help her. Lazy Scottish folks. It's two, two, three, two, three at the top. Help? And then Anybody need help? Who needs help? Okay. You got it? This is his head. Okay. Are we ready to, are we ready to survey? Yeah. Okay, let me uh, make this big. So all you're going to do is answer these questions. So the first question is, how many books have you published? And you'll put in A, B, C, or D for your answer. And when you put it in, we'll start seeing the results come up. If you haven't published yet, it would be A, zero. You're going to type in the letter as a message. Yes. Yeah. Every time I send it, it says, service access denied. Okay, so get out of that and to try it again. Try that again. Just start and do it. He's trying to, he's trying to edit 
Okay, how many books, let's move on, how many books do we buy a year? So, I like the 10 to 20, that's the majority, right, 32%? Oh, 31 or more, I like that, that's good. But it looks like everybody buys books, so you're all readers in here. I keep going the wrong place. Where do you get most of your books? A, B, C, D, or E? from chain stores. Absolutely nobody. But you have a great indie store, so that speaks well for your indie store here, which is really fantastic. Okay, we done? Which book format do you prefer to read?
So Ingram, and there's no reason, who, who here has heard of Ingram before? And there's no reason why you should. You shouldn't be embarrassed by that. Ingram is not really a consumer brand. Uh, what Ingram does is, and has been doing for the last 50 years, is uh, work uh, with publishers and getting their content, and then making that content available to retailers and libraries around the world. And you can see, you know, we work uh, with all the traditional publishers, all the big publishers, down to single book authors that are all the indies that really come to Ingram through Ingram Spark. Today we have uh, about 13, I think it's actually close to 14 million titles in our catalog. And that's where retailers and libraries around the world come to buy all of that content in one place. So as you can imagine, you know, if you're trying to sell your book, you know, to bookstores, to libraries, they want to come to a place they're used to buying books. So that's the, the role that Ingram plays. Um, so this slide gives you an idea of Ingram's reach. Uh, so we, when I say 39,000, uh, retail and library partners in our distribution channel. Amazon is just one of those. That shows how big we are. Amazon is our biggest customer. Um, and we have a really kind of, and me personally, since I used to work at Amazon, um, I have a love-hate relationship with Amazon. I will be truthful with you. Uh, it was a hard gig for me. I worked at Amazon for about six years. I helped to create CreateSpace. I know some of you probably use CreateSpace, which, which is Amazon's print on demand company. And, um, and it's hard. It's, it's a hard place to work. Uh, but Amazon has done a brilliant job of you know, creating a whole platform of readers like none other. So if you're a new author, you, know, you want to have your book in, in the Amazon. Um, big box retailers, and I put a little, I'm going to add in what that is. So that would be Target, Costco, uh, companies like that, retailers like that. Um, specialty wholesalers like Spring Arbor. If you're writing Christian books, Spring Arbor is Ingram's uh, Christian wholesale network that, that sells to Christian stores. And then you see the rest of the list here. So. Everywhere that you want to sell a book, you know, Ingram's probably involved in that transaction. So Ingram Spark. Um, so Ingram had a, a company they launched about 20 years ago called Lightning Source. Anybody here knows Lightning Source? So Lightning Source is Ingram's print-on-demand company. They started it so that there was never such a thing as a book being out of print anymore. They could actually print a book, you know, when they needed it. And, um, and it was started by John Ingram, who is still the owner of the company. And, um, and so, you know, when I came to work at Ingram six, uh, about eight years ago, you know, they had Lightning Source, but Lightning Source wasn't really intended for authors. And so, you know, I helped, actually I created Ingram Spark, um, and I did it at the age of 59, I'm really proud of that, because that is uh, an age that most people aren't, like, still involved in technology, and I kind of am. And uh, you can clap if you want. <laughs> in technology as it, as it relates to publishing. Um, so anyway, I started Ingram Spark uh, six years ago, and, um, and now, like, we're right there with Kindle. Like, Ingram Spark is right there with Kindle as far as new self-published content coming in the door. Oh, I should point out, so if you go to Ingram Spark, even if you don't sign up, uh, you can sign up for a free account, you can get our blog or um, our podcast, stuff like that. But definitely take the Publishing IQ quiz, uh, and it will let you know where you are in the publishing realm, whether or not you're a newbie, what kind of information you need to know, and then they'll serve up content that's related to whatever status you are. So definitely go do that. So this is what you get with Ingram Spark, because some of you, who's already working with Ingram Spark? Anybody in here? 
Can I just bear a number of you? Oh, and can I please, I'll take a moment here. Terry Wartucker. <laughs> Terry Wartucker, stand up. So I, I actually, in my, in my uh, intro, um, Alan didn't mention it, because I hardly ever say this anymore, but I actually used to be a publisher. And I was an independent publisher, and one of the first authors that I ever published was Terry Wartucker. He's right back there. <laughs> <laughs> was there about 25 years ago? Probably. Yeah, about 25 years ago. Yeah, we did it, we did it right. Amazon. Yeah, and, uh, and Terry's a great writer, and, um, and I'm glad that I was able to help you on your journey. And I'm coming with England Spar <laughs> as fast as I can. No, you don't have to say that. <laughs> uh, so Ingram Spark is Ingram Self-Publishing Platform. So with Ingram Spark, you get print on demand that I talked about with Lightning Source, right? We also have, um, you can make your book available in multiple trip sizes. We do hardcover, we do color, um, you know, anything you want. It looks like a regular book. There's nothing weird about it. And, um, and we also do ebook distribution. And then later on top of all that is Ingram distribution, the global distribution part, which is pretty big. Uh, it costs today $49 to set up your book. That's a one-time setup fee. And then POD, and I'm gonna talk about this more tomorrow in my session with Lawrence O'Brien to talk about the, the really great things about print on demand and why you should consider that. So I'm not gonna really talk about it here tonight, but I will do that tomorrow. Okay, so here's another bragging point for me, not only am I old, but, um, but I actually, uh, two years ago, um, and my husband Dale, that's over there, he, <laughs> he, uh, he was at this big fancy dinner where, um, where the Authors Guild of America had, for the first time, gave a vendor an award. They usually give their awards to pretty big time authors. So at the year that, that Ingram Spark got an award, also Tony Morrison and James Patterson got an award. So I actually gave a speech right before Tony Morrison. <laughs> and I'm really proud of that. I get goosebumps still when I think back on that night, especially because she just passed away. And um, she passed away just a few weeks ago. And, uh, and I'm so glad I got to meet her. And one thing I do want to say here about Toni Morrison, um, she to me is uh, one of the best writers that anybody ever should read. I, I just, I've always been a big fan of her work. Um, but they recently did a documentary of her, and it's called Toni Morrison, My Life in Pieces. And that night that we did the Authors Guild Award, they actually interviewed me for that movie. And so when it came out just a few weeks ago, you know, I ran down and, you know, I'm in the movie. And of course I wasn't because <laughs> of the movie. And of course in the movie. Uh, you know, everybody famous is in the movie. And, but I did get interviewed for it, which was kind of a thrill. But um, what Tony says about writers and about writing um, everybody in this room should listen to that. It's very inspirational. You know, she said even for herself, um, you know, she started a, uh, her, her publishing career as an editor at Random House. And, um, and she said it took her a long time. Like she had been published, you know, by major, by Random House and by major publishers for years before she could identify herself just as an author or as a writer. She would say, well, I'm an editor who also writes, right? So I tell you that because all of you probably have other jobs that you do, right? It's hard to make a living, you know, as a writer. But I want you to be proud of that, and I want you to start practicing, you know, identifying yourself as a writer. So the next time you're on a plane or you're at a cocktail party like we are tonight, Somebody asks you what you do, you know, don't tell them you're nine to five. You know, you tell them you're a writer and say it, you know, boost out your chest and say, I'm a writer. Because the next question invariably is going to be, what do you write? And that's the chance to start getting, you know, that person to be a fan of your work. And you shouldn't miss that. So don't be obnoxious about it, you know, be, be, be 
interesting about it and uh, and you know start start thinking very positively of yourself that you're right. Um, I do need some water. Can you get me some? Okay. Um, so anyway, there's uh, there's Miss Morrison who really do go check out that documentary. It's really fantastic. Uh, Abrams Park uh, in 2018, 2019 for the first time we actually self-published authors were on the New York Times bestseller list that are Abrams Park authors. That is possible, it happens every day. So you can do it, so just think about that. So I want to talk a little bit about um, telling you about distribution, because you'll hear that as a new author. Barnes & Noble or your indie store here or a library to purchase them. If it is, then you have distribution and you can get that easily through Ingram Spark and through Ingram. But I want to just tell you that distribution is not magical. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. <coughs> so when you finish your book, and in Ingram Spark, the way it works is you go out, you know, you still are the publisher of your own work. You're still, you know, have to put on a, the publisher hat and become a publisher. You still have to invest in your work in the editing of it, the design of it, and then you upload those finished files into Ingram Spark is how it works. So you would have already done all of that work. So if you're still writing and you're still not to the place, that you have finished digital files, you're probably not quite ready for Ingram Spark, but you can go and learn, you know, about all the stuff you're going to need to know. So distribution takes time; it's not magical. Um, typically, it takes about, uh, I would say, three to four weeks. And the way it works is that uh, the, your book gets uploaded into Ingram Spark. You get a couple of, of um, um, e-proofs. You look at them. We want you, if you have a print book, to order the print book, look at it. And if you're happy with it, you know, you push this button that says enable distribution. So that night, your book goes out into like the ecosystem, right, of all the publishing. So it goes out into the annual catalog. It starts getting fed out over to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, everywhere that's got, um, that is an Ingram customer that has a website. And um, and it, but it takes time. So even on Amazon, you'll see the title goes out one day, you know, uh, two days later the description will show up, you know, three days la later uh, some other piece of metadata, data about your book will show up, finally the cover will show up. So those pieces go out like in the data feed, right? That's all it is, the data feed. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about you know, you don't want to put, you know, get a bet set up um, at a store or at a library, you know, and you really, your book's not fully out there to be ordered yet. So give, give a three week, four week window. Um, and you still have to tell people about your book. It's not, Abram's not doing it for you. You know, you have to, you're the publisher of your own work. You have to let people know. You would say, my book's available from Ingram. That's all you have to say. You don't have to say it's print on demand. You don't have to say it's self-published. You just say, my book's available from Ingram. They'll go, the bookstore will go to the Ingram catalog and find it over their interest. Um, so changes to the data, like pricing, or say you, uh, it's, uh, it's a thriller. Say you written a thriller and you're able to get your book in front of James Patterson. He gives you a quote. There might be something you want to add to the, to the data on your book. You're able to do that. So before you actually publish, these are things that you need to get right. Okay? Um, do the market research on the book, on the title especially. Make sure it is a unique title as much as possible. I know you can't copyright a title, um, but you know, it helps a lot if your title is unique. 
you all are creative people. You know, come up with something interesting with the title. Of, I'm not kidding. This thing matters. The, the number one thing that drives me crazy um, is I just, people will send me books and the titles are just terrible. I mean, the titles are horrible. And it's the number one piece of data on your book that really matters. Spend some time after you finish writing your book, and I know why you're writing. Like, Alan's doing a book, and he and I have already talked about his title. And he did the research, and he said, you know, I think this is right, and came up with something unique that I think is perfect for his book. Um, talk, you know, even brainstorm it with your writing group, with all kinds of people. You need to get the title right. Um, have the reader and audience in mind, and this is the number one thing. Not every, your, your readership is not everybody, okay? It could be you're writing thrillers, only thrill, thrill readers are interested in your book. It could be you're writing YA, only, you know, parents or young adults are interested in your book. You have to know who you're writing for, it really counts. Um, work with professionals, editors, designers, marketers. Uh, have a clear idea for a cover design for your book. And if you're working with a professional book designer, and whatever idea you have for the cover, and they say, this is horrible, listen to them and change the cover. Because they know what they're doing. They know how a book looks. What I encourage you to do is go to, go to the store, go to the bookstore, go to the library, Figure out what section your book would be, what shelf it would be on. Take other books, put them face out. Look at them from across the room. You need to think of your cover, not only big, but tiny. Your book has to work this tiny online, right? It has to look good. And, uh, and you need to, to make that cover really work, okay? It's the two pieces of... Uh, of marketing for your book or the title and the cover design. Two major things. And the blurb. So, uh, where's Lisa that I met earlier today? She, oh, she's back there. So, I, I don't know Lisa. She just walked up, you know, out uh, in, the, in the reception. And she, I said, uh, what have you written? What's your book? She had her thing down to the point that I went and bought her book. <laughs> she, did. she had it down and it, and it wasn't you know just something I mean she had it down to the point that I was really interested in her story and really wanted to find out how it all ends right so that's what you have to do be interesting in your in your door in your um, in your blur and get endorsements if you can it could be that it happens after you've gotten the book out in the marketplace, um, it doesn't matter. Whenever you get a good endorsement, you know, you want to add it to your cover and also to your metadata. Be interesting. You can't believe the number of people that write these author blurbs and bios. All about your day-to-day, nine-to-five. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares about that. They want to follow you as an author. They want to be thrilled about what you're doing. Be thrilling in your bio. It really matters. You know this. Be social on social. I know everybody hates social media. You can't get away from it. You have to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so these are some good examples of, I think, good cover design uh, that are books that are in Ingram Spark. Um, that book up there, Can't Hurt Me. Have you guys seen that book? That author, David Goggins. That book is everywhere. That book is uh, not only a bestseller in Ingram Spark, that's a bestseller in all of Ingram. That book is killing it. Uh, and it's about this rags to riches guy, guy pulled himself up from poverty, became like a Navy SEAL, an Army Ranger, an Iron Man, and tough. You know, this guy's tough. He's the nicest guy in the world to talk to. Uh, really nice and that's what he's doing. He hired a, um, a publicity firm called Scribe Media. He doesn't take many authors, but they took him because of his story. And he's really great on social media, too. 
It's another one, Black Butterfly. This is my poet. You're the poet. This guy, his name is Robert Drake. You ever heard of Robert Drake? I think so. Robert Drake is known as the poet of Instagram, one of the poets on Instagram. He has 1.6 million followers on Instagram. He, um, so this, his work is illustrated. He's also an artist, quite talented artist. He, uh, the way he started was, so think about this. He thought of his work just in pieces, right? So what he did was he took his poems, he got old-fashioned paper, he took pictures, you know, typed them on an old-fashioned typewriter, and then he took pictures one by one. And then started getting this following, and people would go, well, we'd like to get them all together. Why don't you think about a book? So he then illustrated it. Um, and the funny story about Black Butterfly is he had never put together a book before. He did it all himself. He did not follow my advice and hire a designer. He did it himself. So every page was a Photoshop file. If you know anything about at Photoshop, you know, those are big files, right? So he uploaded it into the Ingram Spark system. It went through. His book started catching on. Barnes and Noble started ordering it. Uh, so it, we got so many orders with such a big file, it shut down the entire print. <laughs> it all of lightning source. And if you know anything, this thing is huge. So it shut down all of lightning source. People there are really smart. They figured out how to make the file small. And um, everybody went on and started printing the orders. Two weeks later, Robert found an error in his book that he wanted to fix. So he uploaded a new file and it shut down the print. <laughs> That's when I got to know Robert Drake. <laughs> and he's since gone on to publish about eight different volumes. You should follow him on Instagram, not because I'm telling you to or to buy his book, but just see how he markets his books on social media. He does a really great job of it. And, uh, and he's really quite good. Her, this is a book, it's another book of poetry, and it's this, this Haitian immigrant who's written love poems about his wife. Like, who wouldn't want that, right? Target put that in all the stores this past uh, year. And then uh, this little kids and their big dogs, that's a dog. It's a picture of a dog and a kid, and the whole book is like that. And that guy was on the Today Show with that idea. So it's stuff you can do like that. Um, I think I might wait and do this tomorrow, because this, this kind of gets into it. Uh, but these are all the pieces I keep talking about metadata and how it's important. I'll go through this a little more thoroughly tomorrow. All the different pieces that you have to get right and you need to work on when you start putting your book out to the marketplace. But you see title, description, author, subject code, those kind of things. I will talk about number eight, imprint name. Imprint name is your publisher name. If you're going to self-publish, you can come up with the, your own name for your publishing company. It can be anything you want. I think it should be grand and glorious and sound like you've been around for a long time. And, uh, and make it be anything. I don't encourage you to use your name if you're self-publishing yourself as your <coughs> imprint name because right off the bat, that describes you as being self-published. So I think your imprint name should be a, 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 a publishing name. And think about it. It needs to kind of contribute to your content, but also sound really good. Uh, and then the rest of this we'll go over tomorrow. And we'll talk about ISBNs. You guys know about ISBNs? The International Standard, uh, Standard Book Number. So that's the number that uh, tells your book in the marketplace that it's your book, that it's the publisher's book and it travels the life of the book. So you need a different ISBN for every format of the book. So the hardcover would have one, the paperback would have another, uh, the ebook would have yet another, if you have a large print, that would have another, okay? So here I did talk about uh, Robert Drake, and here's some of his other books that he's done that, um, that I think is just really fantastic. His book, uh, he sells, I can't give you the exact number because I'm not allowed to do that. I will tell you, he sells tens of thousands of books. 
So I like to leave you with kind of this. This is a book that I actually did. Um, this is a book that I did. I went, uh, I went to my grandson's uh, fifth birthday party. His parents uh, hired a pirate ship off the coast of Charleston. All these little kids on it. It's the cutest thing. I never thought about a book. I was just there as grandma, right? I was there, there as Nona. If you see that in the bottom, that's what he calls me, Nona. And I just took pictures. And when I got home, the pictures were so cute. I said, you know, I want to, I want to memorialize this event for him. And so I came up with a little pirate story. I took the pictures and I ran it through this free thing online called Prism. And you can pick like what art you want your that picture to turn into. That's all, it was totally free. So I took the pictures, I made the art, and see, it looks like it was illustrated, right? Okay. And, um, and uh, the pirate named him, pirate named all the kids a different name. He was named Cutthroat, Cutthroat oh, yeah. So I point this out, not to brag about me, but this is stuff that you can do on your, son, on your own, for your own family. I think this is important to have these kind of things. Uh, you could do your whole Christmas thing with stuff like this. I love it. Okay, what, what do successful endings do? The ones that I know about. Like I said, we have a whole bunch of people that are selling tens of thousands of copies of their book a year. So what do they do that makes them different? <coughs> and they do think of themselves as professional writers, professional authors, and they do think of their writing as a way to make money. So some of you that answered, you know, why you wanted to self-publish, the ones that said money, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. That should actually be something that you, you intend to do, is make money with your work. Um, they market themselves online and in person all the time. You know, not in a noxious way, but they, they identify themselves as a writer, like I want you all to do. When you leave this conference this weekend, I want you to start really thinking of yourself as a writer. That's important in all of this. They have the basic marketing tools. They have a website. They have social sites. You know, those things are really important. I know those things, uh, especially website, that can get kind of costly. But there's tools out there that you can do uh, to make that a lot more affordable. So uh, email, you know, way to capture email um, lists is really important. Network at conferences like this. You're part of a tribe, you know. Uh, it's so hard to write. You're sitting there all by yourself. You think, oh my God, you know, who's ever going to know any of this that I'm doing here in the dark, practically? And so it's really good to get out, be part of a bigger group, come to conferences like this, and, uh, and, and do it. Become experts in your field. So if you're writing nonfiction, particularly, you know, it, it's important to become known in whatever you're writing about put yourself out there like that. So I believe that now that you're a writer and author, you know, you need to think of yourself as being part of a publishing ecosystem. It's really important that, you know, we all buy books on Amazon. It's really important to uh, support, if you have a, a fantastic indie bookseller in your community, you should be buying books from there. You really should. And I won't smack you over the head over the, about that, but um, but because I know it can get expensive to buy books, but uh, you should you should buy several books a year from your local independent. Because when you get ready to publish your book and you want them to feature your book, they should know you as a customer. The library should know you as a customer. You need to be part of that. Um, so for see reviews and awards, it's really important, especially if you want to sell your books to libraries and. And I think Amy talks a lot about this. You need to have your book reviewed by professionals, in, uh, professional publishing sources for them to take your book seriously. And not just the Amazon personal reviews, uh, industry reviews are really important for libraries. So don't get discouraged, try to stay positive. You know, think of, do these little fun book projects in between these really kind of painful things that are kind of torturing you. Do something fun with the book. You know, read something fun. You know, just uh, keep it, try to keep it light and know that 
you know, that you're doing something really good for yourself, right? Be happy. Be happy in your in your writing life. Uh, be polite, not rude. I say this because, um, you know, we're a service. Angel Spark is a service vendor for authors, for publishers. And sometimes, you know, this is your life work sometimes. And sometimes people call us up. And they're kind of mean to us. Uh, the mean to our support people. I don't really like that. I don't like for you to be mean to our support people. They really work hard and, uh, and try to do the best I can for you. So. So, uh, the people that are already working in Ingram Spark will know more of what I'm going to show you um, and show you what's coming in the next couple of months, okay, in Ingram Spark, because we're always working to make it better. So, you know, I'm a big proponent of owning your own ISBN. We're actually going to have free ISBNs. Uh, and next week, we're launching free ISBN service next week. Not because I think that's a great thing, it's because everybody's asked us for that, so we're probably going to offer that. So I'm really kind of excited for that. Uh, you know, it costs a lot of money to, to own an ISBN, so that's one of the barriers that keeps people from publishing. So now you can have it for free. Uh, the look inside the book feature that Amazon offers, your books will be featured there now, where they haven't been in the past. And then, we are, we've been working on this for a couple of years, a book building tool. That's one of the things that we've been missing in Ingram Spark, where, uh, you know, you have to go out today to a designer, get your book formatted. We're actually going to have a tool, and I'm going to show you some of it here, where you can drop in your work document, you know, what you want it to look like, and then it'll format it for you. That's going to be for free. Um, we're going to have a thing where you can change your book easily into a large text edition if you want to do that. So this is what the uh, book builder tool is going to look like, where you just kind of pick what you want it to look like. Um, upload your Word file. There'll be a text editor there to fix stuff for you. Um, and even a cover creator tool. So I am really, really excited about that. I've been working on this Two years, I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I can't wait for this thing. It's going to be the end of October when that will show up in the Ingram Spark. So if you're close to half, you know, working on this, you might want to wait a little bit. I'm really excited. Some of that stuff is packaged really seriously here. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> wow. This is a Matt Finish from Ingram Spark. Kudos to uh, Ingram Spark for printing it to look like it should. Totally up to you. You can always be a sole proprietor. 
and still have an imprint, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, you can't like call yourself Amazon.com. We're not going to do that. <laughs> um, and, um, and, you know, so yeah. And I think it should be, what's, what's your publisher? One of them is uh, Jilla Pong. Of course, you know, it means Apple. Questions? Yeah. How soon do you think that new feature will be for um, being able to send a word doc and that you all will be able to convert it? So that will be at the end of October. Uh, is the process that you're coming out with very similar to the way Create Space worked? because they gave you formatting options that helped you put the professional look on the text? Um, since I work at Create Space, I can answer this question. <laughs> it's going to be better than that. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about um, the 39,000 um, potential outlets or, or um, how do they find an Ingram Spark book? I mean, you mentioned that you sent the, the file to, or the whatever, the metadata to Amazon. Do you send the book other places, or do they come to the Ingram catalog? How do they? Yeah, books? you answered that. They come to the the Ingram catalog for to a bookstore or a library. And if you guys have bookstore and library friends, you can always go. Uh, it's called iPage to them, and it goes. It's it's older than Apple, that's why we can call it iPage. Um, and you can go to, the, they can show you the iPage catalog and you can look at it. It looks very similar to an Amazon catalog, uh, book listing. It looks very similar to that. One more question. Hi, thanks so much, this was really interesting. Um, uh, can you explain how the royalty uh, program works with uh, print-on-demand books? Because as I understand, the author gets a certain percentage, then you deduct 15% from that for Ingram, and then you deduct your cost, and then you have the author amount. And you have to price at a certain price so you don't end up at zero or a negative number. So in Ingram Spark, uh, we have what we call um, the author, the publisher can set their own discount that they want to offer to, uh, they call it a wholesale discount. So it can be anywhere between 30 and 55% off the list price that you also put on the book. So for instance, if you put a 30% discount on your book, you're going to earn the opposite of that. You'll earn 70% when that book is sold, like to a, an Amazon or to a Barnes & Noble customer. Um, but you control, like, and the, and the higher the discount, Meaning, the more discount you offer to, to wholesale discount, um, the chances are higher that you're going to sell that book, like into bookstores. Not, not so much libraries, libraries don't really care, but especially for bookstores. And I can, I can talk to you specifically about that and show you. We have a, a, a calculator tool on the site that you can go, you can put in a price, you can put in the discount. And see exactly what you're going to earn on that book. And you control all of that. We don't have a minimum. 
you know, uh, anything. So anyway, that's what that's one of the great things about it. And, and Robin will be around. Robin will be around, of course, all day tomorrow, so you can get into the weeds on those kinds of things with her. You had, you had so one more question. John. I'm a writer. Uh -huh. What do I have to do to become an author? Have you published? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, technically, usually a writer becomes an author when they are actually, their book is in the market. That's the difference. So you're not just writing at home that nobody ever sees it. But you can write now and publish online. It doesn't even have to be something that's sold. And that makes you wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.